Is it usually better to sacrifice easier fingering in, fingerings and go for a more challenging fingering to reach a slightly more colorful sound? Well, I ch always choose fingerings which are risky, not for the risk, but yeah, to keep the co color. Like in the Schumann Concerto, sorry, it's a smaller. <laughs> I like to play, stay on one string. I mean, some people... I don't know what the fingering would be over the strings, but I don't like the loss in quality on the D string. So yes, I think it's... For me, it's worth sacrificing, but depends on, on how you feel. If, if it makes you too nervous and if you get scared, then I wouldn't do it just for the sake of it. For professionals, I would encourage to, to play it on one string unless you fall apart. I mean, so if you take all these difficult fingerings and at the end you feel so afraid and unfree, that is silly. So then take the security fingering. What's, what's better, the sound or the security? So to 80-90% I try to go for the same color or and sometimes one out of a 10 of, out of 100 I might choose the safer fingering. I cannot come up with any example now, but I did the other day, I remember, there I thought, why am I doing that? It's, it's really not worth it. It will be much more audible if I miss that passage than if I stay on the A string. But for example, in the Brahms Sonata, I don't know if you saw that, it's the first time I changed the fingering. I always use the fingering my teacher gave me because I learned it when I was 17. <laughs> And now it was the first time I played. So I stayed on one string. Same here. And I don't know if we talked about that, but this is supposedly very chaffron like fingering. So people who like chaffron, they should use these fingerings because that's really good to include your thumb more actively in your playing. So if copying something from uh, Chaffran copy his inventive and risky fingerings, not necessarily his taste. So in, the, um, in the Schumann Fantasiestücke, there's this... This, this passage, you remember? And she... we... If we use that fingering, if we do that, it will be a huge difference, not only dynamic, but quality of sound and um, expression even. So if we choose to go for the different color, we have to make sure that the quality stays the same. actually have to go more in if we go maybe it sounds nice with the microphone but if there's a piano playing at the same time you're just gone and even if it was a solo piece I don't think four or five meters away there will be character unless you want the dead quality then go for it Joseph also asked me in a email to talk about both tension and if I tense the bow differently for different pieces honestly I've never thought of bow tension until I fell in love with my first bow I mean not the, my first bow but the first bow I ever fell in love with was in 2000 I think I was still living in New York and I went to this shop, the Machol shop, which is closed now because I guess the guy um, was not all honest and legal. But I bought this, I, f I went to the shop because I knew this guy working there and he called me up and said, oh, we have this wonderful bow, you should come in. So I came in and he gave me this Kittel, the Russian tort, as they like to call him. And I tried the bow and it was very nice, but nothing amazing 
And while I was trying the boat, the phone rang and the owner, I think it was Stephen Kate, Stephen Katz or Kate's, no, he, he's dead. So which one of the Kate, whatever, I should know that, shouldn't I? But it was, it was a guy who died of cancer, a very good cellist, I think professor also, he died of cancer a couple of months or years later. And he called in to remind the salesman to tell me to tighten the bow almost parallel. So like, like this. And I did that. And he said that Haifetz, who had a Kittel, did that all his life. Natalia Gutmann did that. And that with Kittel, you have to do that. So I did, and it sounded immediately much better. That's when I fell in love. It needed the higher tension for me to fall in love. So do experiment also with uh, tensing more and less. And now you wanted to know if I have different tensions for different pieces. Hmm. Not really. Well, maybe for Prokofiev Cello Symphony, I make it a bit tighter than for the Bach Suites. Yeah, that's I, that I think. So if you need to produce a lot of sound, I think more tension is good, but maybe that's scientifically wrong. Maybe that's just in my head. Uh, do you have a special personalized curve on your bridge that you keep through the years? No, but I think it also depends on the fingerboard, no? I mean, I have seen some crazy bridges when teaching. Whenever I give a class in real life, I take the instrument of the student and I have seen really some extraordinary strange curves. I mean, the, the should be as natural as possible so that we can practice, I mean, we must be able to play three strings at the same time. So either the three lower strings or the three upper strings. And also the four strings should be possible to, to go quite, so the, the difference mustn't be too big. It was played in the competition of the Brussels. After the competition, the cello had some damage, so they had to repair it. And the owner knew that I prefer French bridges. So he had the repairer put a French bridge on, but didn't change the uh, setup. And the setup didn't work. Now I asked for the Belgian bridge back, just the original bridge, which made the cello sound great. So if, if a cello sounds great, I'm not against Belgian bridges in general. <laughs> we put it on yesterday and the cello sounds much better. But I came to realize that probably we spend far too little thoughts on, on the bridge. We, I mean, there are people experimenting with strings and the string holder and the end pin. I mean, this is also the sophisticated end pin with the holes, all kinds of stuff. But the, the quality of the bridge, and not just French or Belgium, but how the wood is, how it fits to the instrument, it can make a huge difference. So I encourage everybody who has problems with the cello to try to find a luthier who might be willing to experiment a little. I mean, a, a new bridge is expensive. It's three, I mean, I paid 300 euros for it and probably in America it's more expensive and my luthier is quite fair in her prices. But if it makes your cello sound twice as good, that's quite cheap. <laughs> if, if you want to have a better cello, you might have to spend Ten of ten thousands of euros, and if three hundred euro, or let's say you make two, or three bridges to different wood or whatever, different strength, um, you might end up paying nine hundred euros. But if the cello then sounds much better, then it was worth the investment. And if not, just curse me. The problem with bridges and strings is that each cello needs something different to sound its best. Exactly. So while I'm not a great fan of experimenting and try to find the problems in myself, it might be sometimes worth going through the hassle to try to experiment with a bridge because there is no general rule. But if you find somebody who's talented with that, uh, for example, my, my Lutier, she says that those Belgian bridges, they you would use mainly for instruments which are very dark and you can and to, you use the Belgian bridge to lighten up. It goes a little bit against the overall um, quality of the cello and becomes just 
very bright. So if you like very bright and if you don't mind the lower strings not sounding so great, then take a Belgian bridge. But I would f always first try with a French bridge. But the wood has to be top quality. I, she showed me, my, my luthier showed me a catalogue which different categories of, of bridges. Uh, good quality, super quality and whatever, miraculous quality. I would always go for the very miraculous, even if it's 50 euros more, because it makes a big difference. And I mean, even if you have a bad cello, let's say worth 1000 euros, what does the difference of 50 make? I mean, you might as well pay for the really good bridge with the valuable wood and the, I don't know, I don't know anything about wood, what, but she could tell what is a good wood and what not. So somebody with experience, you would use a good bridge and, I mean, a good wood for your bridge.